in this video we'll talk about chlamydia trochomatis and its serotypes this is a high yield video for usmle step one stay tuned till the end chlamydia trochomatis is a bacteria that is well known for sexually transmitted infection this is the obligate intracellular parasite of eukaryotic cell they cannot make their own atp and that's why they're dependent chlamydia has a peculiar feature in terms of the cell wall. The classical peptidoglycans are lacking and they have reduced muramic acid. That is why beta-lactam antibiotics are ineffective on chlamydia. This is very important from a clinical point of view. Let's see what kind of infection and damages can be caused by chlamydia trochomatis. These include neonatal and follicular adult conjunctivitis, non-gonococcal urethritis, reactive arthritis, and pelvic inflammatory disease, just to name a few. One of the uh, important thing that is uh, trochoma is a devastating disease caused by chlamydia. Now trochoma is very common and caused by the serotypes A, B, C. And this is common in low income countries where basically the overall treatment procedure is not that good and availability of reagents are not uh, good. Now it can cause a chronic keratoconjunctivitis that might lead to blindness if untreated. So trachoma can be transmitted by personal contact, for example droplet infection or let's say touching the contaminated surface and rubbing the eyes henceforth. So there are different stages of trachoma. Initially, this is how the normal eye look like and in the early stages of trachoma, there would be intense inflammation. Then the there would be scarring in the eyelids and eventually there could be clouding in the cornea and if untreated, even at that stage, there could be blindness due to trachoma and it happens in many low income countries like Africa. Serotypes D2K can also lead to other type of infection and it's mostly transmitted during birth. In general, chlamydia infection can spread, spread from mother to the baby. So when the, uh, in the time of delivery, the, when the fetus is coming out of the birth canal, at that point of time, the baby can get infected with chlamydia. That is why neonatal conjunctivitis and other infections are not so uncommon these days. Alongside that, serotypes D and K can lead to pelvic inflammatory disease and non-gonococcal urethritis. In women, chlamydia can cause different type of complication when it comes uh, uh, compared to the men. So in women, there could be pelvic inflammatory disease, chronic pelvic pain, infertility, it, it might increase the chances of ectopic pregnancy or it can lead to premature birth or miscarriage even. Also reactive arthritis is additional. In case of men, there could be inflammation in the testicles, epi epididymis and it can lead to epididymoarthritis. Then there could be reactive arthritis which is pretty much common between male and female as well and it can also lead to inflammation in the rectum. Now let's talk about and summarize the serotype and the disease caused by them. So already we talked about the serotypes A, B and C and it lead to chronic inflammation, cause blindness due to follicular conjunctivitis in resource limited areas like in low income countries in the third world countries. Now the serotype D and K, D2K they can lead to generally urethritis, pelvic inflammatory disease, ectopic pregnancy that we talked about already. And one thing it's important that chlamydia can be transmitted from mother to baby during the time of delivery. Then the serotype L1, L2 and L3 can lead to uh, lymphogranuloma venerum, a small painless ulcer on genitals which are swollen, painful, and that can lead to many other complications. So basically the lymph node forms bubble-like structure and ulcerates. And anyway, these overall uh, 
symptoms can be treated with antibiotics like doxycycline. So now let's see how trachoma is transmitted. Obviously, it's a sexually transmitted disease. So unprotected sex, multiple partners, transmit. it can also transmit it during pregnancy, which we already looked, or it can also be transmitted during blood transfusion. So who are most likely to get infected by chlamydia? Generally, the young women are more vulnerable towards the infection uh, with chlamydia. But anybody can get affected, be it a mature male or female, anybody can get affected. Now, it's not really difficult to treat because it's a bacterial infection can be treated with antibiotic. But detecting the disease at proper time and proper treatment is necessary. But there is a concerning uh, outcome from latest research. Because while other sexually transmitted disease like Neisseria gonorrhea and syphilis have plateaued over last 10 years, the incidence of chlamydia is increasing, which is pretty much concerning because in early stages, trachoma goes undetected. Let's talk about the diagnosis in that context. So how chlamydia can be detected? Most strains of chlamydia trachomatosis can be detected with monoclonal antibodies such as VS4 or MOMP antibodies. So basically, ELISA-based test can be used to detect them. And always for any of these bacteria, PCR-based diagnosis, though expensive, can be a better, uh, a better sensitive and more high throughput diagnosis in this case. Let's talk about the treatment of chlamydia. Obviously, it's a bacterial disease, so it will be treated with antibiotics. So let's see what are the antibiotics of choice. So generally, clinicians can try a broad spectrum and antibacterial such as azithromycin, tetracycline. So these are the two ones which are in a drug of choice. Other than that, erythromycin can be used in small children and pregnant women because um, sometimes tetracyclines can cause calcification. So in order to avoid that, erythromycin can be used. The question is, are there antibiotic resistant chlamydia strains? And recent research shows that indeed there are antibiotic resistant chlamydia strains which are uh, reported worldwide. And that's a matter of concern for the clinicians. However, it's also important that we should know chlamydia uh, pneumonia and chlamydia cicati can cause atypical pneumonia and can be transmitted via aerosol. This is also important from an exam point of view. So I hope this video was useful. If you want more notes, flashcards, visit our Instagram page, follow us on Facebook. You can support our channel using super thanks. You can pay via PayPal, Paytm or UPI. So uh, see you in next video.